You're still watching unsubscribed, aren't you? Eh, aren't you? Hey, subscribe, will ya? Hey everybody, welcome back to another plug-in development uh, video in this series. Last time we left off, uh, I, we just created all the way up to the point of short code. We were actually going to display something, like for the first time, yes, on the front end, we're actually going to output something, all this build-up to get to right here. Uh, and if you haven't got to this point, it's pretty easy to follow the videos up to this part. So first thing I want to show you right away is that uh, back in our site here, uh, we created this short code right here. And it doesn't do anything at the moment. If we go and we create a page, I'm just going to add a new page. And we don't even have to name I guess I'll just name it. I'll just call it um, the videos. And then, let's see, I'm actually using Themify. Um, but if you weren't using Themify, you just put your short code right here. Uh, I'm just going to do Themify and then just go show you, uh, let's see, hide the page title. Yes, I really like Themify, by the way, for anybody who's uh, not following any other series I had where I was talking about Themify. It's actually my favorite um, theme builder. I know a lot of people use Avada and Divi and all that, but I, I prefer Themify. I think it's highly underrated. All right, so here's a page, a basic page, and I'm just going to turn on the builder. And then, if, like I said, if yours isn't like this, in the back end, you would have just um, pasted your short code in. But in this case, I'm just going to drop in a text field, and then I'm going to put a short code in. I don't want any of that. Right here. And it's just going to say loading short code because there's nothing for uh, it to be loaded. And if we hit save on this, and then we close it, it's not going to do anything. It's there, but it's doing nothing. Now, how can I prove this to you? Let's just run a quick echo statement. We're going to say, actually, I might want to bring this code up a little bit, too. It seems like it's uh, pretty small. Man, I know we can set this up. I'm just trying to remember how to do it. I know there's a way to zoom in on the code. All right, it doesn't matter. I just want to make it bigger for you guys so you can see it a little better. But all right, so in the uh, echo part, we're just going to say uh, this is the short code. All right, simple enough, right? Back over here, it's just going to say this is the short code. So we know that it's doing something, right? We know that something is happening. Well, how do we get it to display our videos that we saved from our um, YouTube import? Which, by the way, on that YouTube import, I'm just going to go ahead and reload everything to get the most recent videos because I am using uh, Motor Trench channel and I haven't upgraded it since the last time that we um, did a video. So I'm just going to delete everything. All the videos are now deleted from the database. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder where my... Oh, there must be nothing. There must be nothing in there. Okay, perfect. So we've successfully imported. When I deleted, there wasn't showing the message because I'd already done it before. So, all right, back in the front end, uh, we want to do. We actually want to show the videos now. Well, we already kind of wrote the code to do this, believe it or not, back in our import call page. This is the callback in our partials, our administrative side partials, right here under um, importer call. This is the one we were building for our import page. And if you remember down at the bottom, we actually had an action under the delete action that calls in all of the videos and then cycles through them to delete them. We could very easily repurpose this code right here for a display, right? Because we're gathering all the videos. They're now available to us in a for each and we can output whatever we want. Pretty simple, right? So let's do this. Let's create a and actually we want to get rid of this uh I want to get rid of this i want to keep this little piece of code right here and i'll show you why but we want to get rid of the rest and let's just start with some echo statements so let's just run a div and we can give it classes for grid and all that here in a little bit just at the moment i just want to show you how to actually get these things displayed out so then you close your div tag. So now we're opening and closing a div. And remember, you could also do this without echoes. You could just um, close the PHP tag and then reopen the PHP outside of your HTML. And that, that would actually work too. But in this case, I'm just going to do echoes. All right. And then let's just echo out the medium resolution image. Okay. So we're going to say echo each post ID. Now that's going to do the ID. Well, where can we get the photo, the high-res photo? If you remember, in our import call page, a little higher up, we set all of these custom meta fields for all of our uh, special, or all of our custom meta. So if we wanted to output the medium URL, we just have to call the key that we set right here. And then if we take that back and we paste it right after here, that's what we're calling now. But we obviously have to put it in an image tag or it won't work. So we need to open this up. We need to say SRC equals, and then, because it's actually the URL for the image is what we're calling right now. 
and then we close that and then we close the tag now uh, you need to actually close the um, cl open and close the concatenation for the string otherwise it won't work there we go so we created an image src we gave it the opening tag output the image closed it and it should work uh, actually the only other thing I want to do here is I think I want to line break these photos away from each other so I'm just going to run a couple of breaks. Let's take a look now at what that shortcode is doing. As you can see, these are the most recent five videos um, from YouTube. Well, these are their thumbnails anyway. And it actually has them upside down. I know because I watch Roadkill Garage all the time. And this is their most recent video they just put out. So it's actually doing these in um, a descending order, I'm pretty sure. Or ascending, ascending order. So it's showing the oldest one first. And then... Um, uh, change that we can actually do that with uh, a call in here for our type in our array We can actually change it to ascending descending and we'll probably end up doing that in another video to switch them around Okay, so we know that we're, we're properly gathering and storing our data right because we you just watched me I just went ahead to the back end and I deleted and imported so we know that our import is working because here's because uh, Here's all those pictures and uh, there's a couple things we could do now. We could start uh, playing with the title for example um, we could give these divs backgrounds. I mean, think about it. This is fully customizable to whatever you want to do with these. Conditional statements. You can put output only certain types. There's all kinds of stuff you could do. But let's go with just maybe like, um, let's just do a regular paragraph. Okay. And inside the paragraph, we're going to go ahead and just create open and closing uh, paragraph tags. All right. And then in between here, now we need our each post. This right here. And now we can go grab whatever data we want from here. In this case, let's grab the Y title. That's what we named it. And then let's go ahead and break that as well. Back over here, we should have the titles for each of these videos. Now, as, as of the moment, they're just thumbnails, right? They don't actually do anything. They don't go anywhere when you click them or anything like that. Uh, but we are seeing that our information is stored properly in the database we are storing this information and so you have to understand when you're calling this image you're not using an API call you're calling the physical image uh, itself on YouTube it, you're like requesting the resource but that's not using the API so you're not getting dinged for these every time you run your every time you run a refresh on this page if you had just been calling the code in your import call right here to go run through and display and grab all these item snippets and run this code to get the file contents every time that's burning up api calls that was the whole reason we're building this is to avoid that so we've already avoided making more than one api call think about it we're now we're really going to hit our cap at this rate because everything's being displayed locally so a couple options from here you could display you could do descriptions think about it at this point we have uh, let's take a look back at our custom fields. We have published at dates, channel ID, video ID, description, uh, high resolution image. I mean, let's do, let's do like our um, published at date. Okay, this is going to tell us when the videos were published. I mean, there's like I said, there's all the stuff that we can get, right? And then this allows us also to break it down and be able to sort videos by newest to oldest as well. Uh, that's also a distinct possibility, but now we can do lots of stuff like we could create a jQuery light box when these are clicked uh, YouTube video actually pops up in a light box We could do and what I'm planning on doing I think is a standalone page uh, So I don't know if I'll have the plugin create it or if I'll just create it myself But what I would like to do is create a grid system that has uh, like let's say your top 10 videos or whatever and when you click say like the image of the the Camaro or like the title It'll be like maybe an entire clickable box, and then when the user clicks it, it'll actually go to videos, uh, like another page, and then in that page, it'll have a get variable that um, it take as a parameter. It takes the YouTube's. Um, let's go back here, and I'll show you what I mean. It takes the uh, video ID parameter because this is what actually contains the video ID for the embed code that you get from YouTube and all that. So I'll show you what that is right now. Uh, oh, actually, that's code. Sorry about that. It's not going to print that. Um, but yeah, what we want to do is we want to print the uh, video ID and then we want to show, okay, so the video ID is used in correlation to, uh, like I said, when you do a video embed and then it wants the video ID when you're on YouTube and you see like it, it has the question mark and then it has the video ID, that's what it's going to display. So what I want to do is I want it to be clickable to go to a page 
and it sends the get variable as the video ID, and then inside the page's full width, it will display the title of the video, the description of the video, and a big, huge resolution version of the video, and uh, allowing users to click from that page and come back here. And maybe we could even display all our videos underneath that, and they could click them, and it just refreshes on the same page, or something like that. I don't want to make it too complicated, so I'm trying to figure out a way to just kind of make this simpler. But as you can see, our short code now already very, very easily using the same exact code from our delete function is now allowing us to display videos. And like I said, here you can go hog wild. You can do anything you want. So think about it. In between this for each loop, you can do anything with the information that you get from your import call from your data right here. You can use high resolution images, low as resolution images. You can do light boxes. You could do conditional if statements and all that. And so let me ask you this. When we set display parameters in the back end of our site, um, you remember that part in our settings where we created an options field for our short code and we said display type. Where do you think this gets read to? Right in here. We can make an if statement right in here that calls in that get option. So we could create a variable like call it display op and then we could say get option and then go get that option. And so it would say in this variable image center and then we would say if image center equal or if display op equals image center it's going to output all these html tags and type you see where i'm going with this it should be it should be clicking for you if it's not i mean i mean that's that's a pretty good way to look at it and so you think about it you can do as many of these options as you want display type um, if it was a light box or a, go to a page i mean you can do so much stuff and then over here in your short code you can just program it to do what you want Okay, and I think we're already over 10 minutes in this video, but I just wanted to give you a quick idea of how we're um, able to read through our posts. So we just gather all the posts like we did on our delete. We give it the post type of our custom post type we made and the number of posts for how many videos we want to display. Now right here, number posts here is the same thing. Um, we would just do get option and we would get that option, right? So back in our settings callback page, when we do get option uh, right here, see this Y post count? That's the code that we already wrote to get our Y post count. We could easily take that right back here, make a, a new variable called the post count or something like that. And remember I said a lot of times I'll camel case stuff. I'm kind of just throwing these out there. Okay, now we have gathered post count from settings, right? Okay, now what do you think we could put here? Now you'd wanna do is set and all that and default it to like say 10 if nothing is set. You'd do an is set and if, if not, make it 10. Or you could also do just a if post count is equal to uh, nothing or null or zero, default to whatever. But we know that it equals something in our case because I already set it back here. And also let's lower it, let's lower it to three. All right, so we set it to three. Now back in the front, we should have a few of these disappear. Look at that. So you see that real time now, I was already using our options. So I called in the option, which was three, put it right here. If we go right back, turn it to four. Head right back to the front end, refresh, it'll be four. So we could do all kinds of stuff. That's the point I'm trying to point out is that we've just created a fully functional YouTube plugin. I mean, at this point now, it's just a, a, about customizing the output, which like I said, there's gonna be a few more videos on that and uh, maybe making as many options as you want, okay? But this is pretty much a basic YouTube API importer plugin. So I think that's gonna wrap us up for this video. I just wanted to show an example of outputting them on the front end. I didn't do any styling or anything. I just wanted to show you, hey, it's really simpler than you think to call in your uh, custom post type you just need to grab it exactly as I showed you here. Uh, you can take steal the code right from your delete section, put it right over here, and then you start calling them just like this. And you just grab the parameter. You can grab those right out of your import call from your custom meta that you established for each item you're saving in your database. And just put them just like this. And you can call them however you want. You do have to make sure, though, that you're putting them in the proper tags and all that stuff, or they won't display. Because, like, the image res is just the URL for the image. It's not actually the image itself. And so you'd have to make it a source of an image tag, etc. So, anyway, hey, like I say every time, subscribe, will you? And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. We're actually going to try to style some of this up, maybe do a grid system, and then uh, start thinking about making them clickable to their own page and making a, a standalone page that displays videos off a... Uh, 
of a um, get variable. So anyway, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.